In the 1920s, movie goers would watch an orchestra, which also played during the movie and after the movie. To save the cost of a 30-piece band, an organ operated by air pressure was installed in several cinemas around the world. When sound movies appeared in the late 20s, many theatre organs were sold to churches, private homes and ice skating rinks. One of the eight theatre organs in Victoria can be found at the Denty Multiplex in Brighton, where it is played for the public four times a year, along with silent movies, some of which have appeared here on Channel 44. Well, this particular organ was built in 1923 in uh, North Tonawanda in New York State, America. Uh, it was the first large Wurlitzer organ to be exported outside of the United States. It remained in pretty much regular use until the 1950s, um, and then once television came in, that was it. All the organs were closed down. As far as carnivals and freak shows, they go back to a much earlier time, back to the 19th century, and they used fairground organs. And again, they had pipes and they had wind, but they were uh, voiced to play orchestral works, marches and things like that. The main reason for them, though, was, was just to provide loud music to get you to come and have a look at that particular carnival operator's stand. It's no different to going to the... Uh, uh, royal show today. You know, every ride or attraction is blaring out loud music at you. Say, do you love doing it? By the time you accompany the same film about four or five times, you really never want to see the film again. But uh, but it is kind of fun to do. And of course, the accompaniment changes a little bit. You have the same theme, so you have your basic themes to do with um, your chase scenes, uh, slapstick, and just incidental music. It doesn't always have to be full chords. It could be simple notes. Um, if you're just like um, if you're just building a bit of suspense. <laughs> Single. It doesn't have to be a full, full-blown accompaniment. Um, you use a lot of the percussions, like the piano and the xylophone and glockenspiel, just to give you a bit of speed. Particularly when things are running, there's car chases and what have you going on. You've got all your different sound effects, so you know. So what you do is you look at the film. Uh, one of the ones I did um, a while ago called Liberty shows they're on a, they're on a, allegedly on the top of a multi-story building in Los Angeles, which is really only about like 30 feet off the ground. But um, so you see, every time you look down, you see the trams and the, because they had street cars in those days and the cars. So you would use a lot of the sort of sound effects to illustrate that. So you'd have, um, for the trams, you would have the sort of And you'd be playing a couple of chords to sort of get that effect. So the whole idea is that the organist accompanies a film to, so that the audience is completely and utterly unaware that there's a theatre organ or an instrument playing because they're so focused on the, on the imagery. 